everybody's home. Hello. This is Jimmy Buffett for the Florida Bay Research Radio. The deciduous forests Florida surrounding you have not Florida been altered Bay since Bay. the establishment of the park. You know that Lake Pontchartrain covers 400,000 acres. Its water ranges it's from fresh to moderately saline. We'll explore the port in the next few minutes through this demonstration of low-power radio. It's a limited time offer, so please stop by somewhere. the visitor center, fill out the survey, and pick up your free book. Here in our Woods Hole parking possible. lot, we think it's safe to assume you're about to take the ferry, maybe for the first time, or maybe you do it every day. In any case, we put together a little. It's just a neat sort of new tool to use to, to give people a message. The National Park Service was the first user of traveler's information starting back in the 1970s. They kind of invented it, and then it was adopted nationally. You see it used in highways, airports of America, just about every national park. The primary purpose has always been, and I think will continue to be, providing that visitor information uh, in, a, in a general snapshot so that people can say, wow, here, I didn't know about that. Printed information, as you know, is all dated information. You know, it can change tomorrow. But this system here, we'll be able to change it hourly if we want to. It took me about a day to get it installed here and another half day to get the information onto the unit. Maintenance is very, very low. We have very few failures with it. There's a lot of competition on the coast, uh, vying for tourism, recreation. So the more information we get out, and that's one of the reasons we pick low-power radio, is to uh, keep the public informed. The components of a low-power radio system include a radio transmitter, a message machine to capture and broadcast pre-recorded messages, an antenna, because after all, it's a small radio. And lastly, the most important component is good signage to alert people to the broadcast in the local area. Welcome to the village of Woods Hole. I'm Jay Allison. We prepared a little something for you to tell you about our town. Like all kind of end of the road places, I mean, you, you're at the end of the road when you, when you come to Woods Hole. I mean, you can't go any farther without taking to water. I suppose all end-of-the-road places have a certain charm. Woods Hole is a lot of things. Like other New England fishing villages, it's quaint in the appropriate ways. It has lighthouses, lobsters, taciturn Yankees. But primarily, let's face it, Woods Hole is a science town. Home to when we thought of the captive audience of people sitting in the cars waiting for the ferry, we thought it would be really neat to tell them something that they ask people all the time, like information about the ferry, the trip, um, and things about Woods Hole and the scientific institutions. A hundred years later, the waters around here are still rich in marine life, like the Woods Hole squid. And that could be anyone from tourists visiting for the first time, people who actually live here and commute on the ferry, or residents of Martha's Vineyard that just come for the summer. And um, so we purposely wanted to target our messages to be a little bit entertaining, a little bit educational, a little bit informative, and mostly just being able to learn something exciting and, and hear some local musicians and enjoy their stay. Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket have had regularly scheduled ferry service since 1817, when the first steamship, the Eagle, made the trip carrying 60 passengers. Now, at the height of the summer season, there are 32 crossings per day to Martha's Vineyard alone, carrying roughly 1,100 passengers per trip. That's 35,000 people back and forth per day. That's a good job. It's work with a good group of guys. That's Mike James. He works for the steam. I would just uh, get through listening to the station. The first part I heard was about the ferry. It was very informative. And the second part, describing Woods Hole and all the different institutions here, which I thought was very interesting. This technology is very informative, um, especially for people who have never been here before. Low power radio is a great way to reach an audience that we probably could never have reached before. This radio broadcast was brought to you by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution Sea Grant Program and was produced by Atlantic Public Media for the new NPR stations in our region. If you're traveling over a bridge or along a shore within the sound of my voice, you're no doubt seeing what many call the hidden treasure of the New Hampshire seacoast, Great Bay Estuary. We estimate that there are about 30,000 motorists who drive along the shores of the Great Bay Estuary each day. 
and we are trying to reach them with messages about reducing sources of pollution within the bay, about why the bay and any estuary is important, about some of the wildlife that's living around the bay. Springtime is a great time to appreciate the Great Bay Estuary. Fish are my Because most of our listeners are probably folks who live in the immediate area, we feel it's important to change our messages pretty frequently. So we aim to change the message between every four to six weeks. Native Americans described estuaries as the land between. Here, fresh river water mixes with salty ocean water, creating one of the... In order to get feedback from people, we encourage them through the broadcast to go onto our website, and that will bring them to a short questionnaire. Be eligible to win free passage for two on a UNH day-long educational discovery cruise next summer by completing and submitting... I was driving across the bridge at Great Bay, and I noticed a sign for the radio station, Great Bay Radio, and I was intrigued with it. So I tuned in, and there was a survey on the website, and if you took it, it would enter you to win a contest. I logged on and answered the survey, and a few weeks later I got a call that I was the first winner for their their discovery cruise. We got out into Great Bay and there were different stations that they were going to stop at. We were measuring water temperature. It's very flexible to use. If I want to change the message I just dial up on the phone and make a quick change. It has the potential to reach a lot of people as long as people know to, to tune in. Um, for us it's also been a, a useful tool for strengthening partnerships with uh, sister organizations, uh, folks who are doing the same kind of work. Hi, I'm John Hansen from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, reminding you that a busy construction season is now underway as we work to improve the state's transportation system. You may on occasion... Another important partner, of course, is New Hampshire Department of Transportation, who own the property where we locate our equipment and who always have permission to use the airways when they need to for roadway emergency information. Hello, motorists. You're listening to Causeway's Information Radio, 1610 AM. Caution, there are heavy thunderstorms on the causeway. Due to decreased visibility, reduce your speed and turn your headlights The Causeway on. Bridge is a 24-mile bridge over water. There are no emergency lanes, and safety is our big concern. So we can alert people to roadway conditions that have deteriorated ahead or if there are accidents ahead. Caution, there are high crosswinds on the causeway. Our police dispatchers select messages from a predefined library. It's standard wave format files that are very, very standard on a Windows computer. And all the messages are pre-recorded, so we can use up to 16 separate messages to build one sequence. All they do is click on it at that point, and that one starts being broadcast of all transmitters. And we also have some public service announcements for LSU. We run about the, the quality of the water in the lake, things that people can do to improve the quality of the water in the lake. The wetlands around Lake Pontchartrain serve as a giant natural water treatment system filtering sediments and absorbing nutrients and chemical pollutants. This message is a service of the LSU Agricultural Center's Cooperative Extension Service and the Louisiana Sea Grant College Program in cooperation with... When people purchase toll tags to cross the bridge, we give them a little card that tells them that 1610 is available. There are signs at the toll plazas telling about 1610, and we also have a website that mentions 1610. Uh, anytime you can save one person's life or you can keep people from complaining about being late for work because, and give them the option of taking an altered route, it's very much worth it. The Newport Chamber of Commerce welcomes you to Newport on the central Oregon coast. There are plenty of things to see and do for the whole family. We're Oregon's leading commercial fishing port and the fishing fleet preserves the charm of our port. There are historic sites like the Aquina Bay Bridge, which is over 50 years old. The Aquina Bay State Park. It's always been our theme that there's a lot of things to do in Newport and that we don't want people to miss any of them because we'd like them to make their day trip into a two or three day trip. Newport has plenty to offer, so stay an extra day. There are over 1,400 motel rooms and over 600 RV and state park RV and tent spaces. We've tried to feature the various parts of our community. We've tried to feature some of the main attractions. We've tried to make sure that folks understand how accessible the beach is, but at the same time we can provide a safety message. It also directs uh, folks to the Chamber of Commerce office, and during those times, uh, regular office hours, of course, uh, we encourage them to come by and pick up more information or to ask us if they have any questions. So, for kite flying, beach combing, whale watching, strolling, fishing, shopping, and relaxing.
Welcome to Newport. The message that we were going to provide, the value of that message to our visitors was without question. And so anyone that we talked to about the program, whether they were able to actually provide monetary support or not, definitely became believers and were supporters. Welcome to the Port of Newport and an opportunity to explore one of the more active and diverse marine environments on the West Coast. From shipping, commercial fishing, marine research, and restaurants... Well, we felt that the public had a need to be more informed about the fishing industry and what goes on at the waterfront, especially a working waterfront like Newport. And it was very interesting to be able to catch people in their cars and uh, it kind of sparks their interest and gives them an opportunity in this working bayfront area to, to listen to what's going on and uh, be more informed. Fishing is primarily a family business. It affects all members of the family and isn't just a job, but a way of life. Many of the vessels you see are... Low-powered radio, at least you, you listen to a real voice and uh, it puts you in a probably a different mood as you're sitting on the waterfront listening to somebody tell you something rather than reading it. So it's, it's more of a comfortable way of receiving information. Hi, this is Jimmy Buffett for Florida Bay Research Radio. Hey, did you know the bay bottom is alive? Yeah, most of the shallows around the Keys and in Florida Bay are covered with living seagrasses. Seagrasses are cool because they the Florida Sea Grant has been using low-power radios for some time. For several years, we had one 10-watt radio working in the Florida Keys, a solar-powered radio that broadcasted environmental messages regarding the Florida Bay project. Have you been fishing or boating outside of Florida? If you are trailering a boat, please stop at the Welcome Center just ahead for some literature on what we don't have any zebra mussels in Florida at this time, but we're trying to prevent them. And the most likely way that they'd get here would be on a trailered boat coming from some place that has zebra mussels. Our low power radio is targeted for those people. We have 10 small radios, 100 milliwatt radios, on order to be placed in marinas around the state of Florida. It's really a national project that we're testing here. Florida has about 830,000 registered boats. We also have an additional 400,000 boats visiting the state each year, not including those canoes and kayaks and other boats that aren't registered in Florida. We have 365 days a year of boating in Florida, unlike other states. People are out there all the time in high numbers and using their boats. Well, some of the suggested messages that we will put into the marina radios will be messages on seagrass beds and how not to tear them up. We'll have some safety messages as well and they will deal with wearing personal flotation devices or life jackets. We'll have a whole variety of those kinds of messages, both safety and environmental. Low power radio is an excellent opportunity for boaters to learn about the local area they come into. It's also an excellent opportunity on the part of marinas to be able to communicate uh, things of concern to the marinas, such as their operating policies and so on, as well as what's in the area locally that might be of interest to the boater. The Hatfield Marine Science Visitor Center is open every day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Memorial Day weekend through late September. Admission is free of charge and donations are gratefully accepted. Your donation supports... The objective with the Low Power Radio was to provide visitor services and that's uh, to inform them as they approach what is here because this is a really you know, a unique center. We were targeting not only the visitors coming to the visitor center, but also uh, the possibility of the RVs who parked across the street at the port of Newport. The visitor center has volunteers eager to assist you, a book and gift shop specializing in ocean and coastal subjects, and an auditorium where you can see education. Another way that we try to get the word out is through our brochures, and we've created a little sticker. Uh, that we had you know, stick on to our existing brochure that has the uh, Coast Talk 1610 AM. One of the voices that we thought would be really unique and ear catching maybe was to have Senator Hatfield uh, speak and welcome people to the visitor center which is of his namesake. Hello, this is Mark Hatfield welcoming you to the Hatfield Marine Science Visitor Center, a place where you can explore, discover, 
and learn about the exciting world of low power the radio has so much potential and it can be used in a lot of different ways i think audio exhibits in, in interpretation is is wide open and in the people are going to be more attracted to that as we're sort of busy and moving along on your vacations you know you can get information quickly so I think there's a great potential I could see a low power radio system all the way down the coast as you drive down through the coast the scenic you know byways low power radio has several advantages first of all it's relatively low cost the, uh, the radios can be as cheap as about $3,000 for the entire unit, up to $12,000 depending on whether one is using a 100 milliwatt transmitter or a 10 watt transmitter. The 100 milliwatt transmitter typically carries a signal about a half mile in radius, whereas the 10 watt transmitter typically covers about 10 square miles. The low part of radio here at Boiler Bay has allowed us to extend our interpretation from uh, two weeks a year to at least through the summer, if not year round. With our staffing levels, uh, at this point we're only able to offer interpretive programs in the campgrounds and the nearby adjacent day use areas. Many of the national parks are understaffed uh, in terms of being able to reach the public. Uh, we may have one or two people at the front desk that will be able to talk to, but uh, when you have 25, 50 people coming into an area, a lot of those people wouldn't be able to have their questions answered without waiting in line, and many of them don't have the time. So we will use low power radio as a means of talking to all these people about the salient features in the park. Some of the other advantages of low power radio to consider are there's no paper involved. So after the initial you know, investment, it, it pretty well maintains itself, so it's clean. We have an opportunity to edit and prepare scripts whereby we can talk to the people in the same manner. We can verify the information that we're providing to them. Also access for people who are compromised in getting around or seniors that can also receive the information without leaving uh, their car. This tool has tremendous potential for businesses, governmental agencies, educational organizations because literally information is provided 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It provides information at the time that people want and need the information, and it does so in a very cost-effective fashion. 